should be live. Hi, everyone. I am here with Alistair, and uh, Alistair is basically going to run this video for us. This is your video, <laughs> Alistair, because this started more or less as a conversation we had uh, on Sunday evening after World Open War, didn't it? It did. So World Open War, as you've covered on your channel, um, big team event, international, top level players from the Northern Hemisphere. And it was the first big V3 run out that we all had. So we were all sort of feeling our way around army lists. And there was there was variety there. But for myself, and what I'm going to talk about is the list I took, but the learnings from it. And all my listing approach to version 3 bolt action has been very extreme. I've mm. leaned into themes in a hard way. Um, Me as well, yeah. You know, I, I have tried, I have ran balanced lists and had great enjoyment with them, but I am on a learning path that I, I'm going to share with part of that with you and your audience um, to find out where the extreme sort of lengths of version 3 list building can take us. And so today we've I've made up a little Excel PowerPoint um, as a homage to yourself. You do like an Excel, sorry, a PowerPoint. I will now share. Just yes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm doing that. You you talk on. Yeah. So while Bo is pulling up the PowerPoint, all the views I've got are based upon the six competitive games that I played at World Open War, plus some testing games. So it's not going to be. Um, I'm not right. I'm just giving you, the audience, the opinions and the learnings that I believe I've found through gameplay and testing. And uh, I'm not right. But I would also like to point out I'm not wrong. This yeah, is just... and, and I think we saw a bit of that because a lot of the people who did really well, and I mean, just a lot of people in general, had brought tank platoons, at least tank platoons, although you, of course, leaned very heavily into that. Yeah, and that's one of the points that we'll cover um, as we go on. So, so with this this presentation, I'm going to talk through very very briefly the six games that were played at World Open War, and some of the outcomes and takeaways from each of those games. And you know, at the end, um, I'll make some pretty broad statements, I think, um, which will trigger some people. And that's not what I'm here to do. I'm always let me come on to. I guess, show people the path that I'm walking. I don't necessarily like the things I'm doing. I'm just wanting to test out what can be done. And um, yeah, right. take it from there and drink wine. And drink wine, go. Let's do this then. Okay, so first off is the army list itself. So you can see a picture of it in action there. But the... The World Open War format Bo has covered. I would suggest you go and see some of his other videos, but it was a tank platoon with uh, four Panzer threes. I can't remember what mark they were, but they're the, the early war Panzers that, Panzers that have got the additional uh, coax medium machine gun. <clears throat> so they effectively put out 12 medium machine gun shots or one anti-tank shot and four hull MMG shots. So depending on what fire um, method I'm using at the time. Then for the command vehicle, I had the up armored and up gunned Panzer III. So it was a armor nine tank with a medium anti tank gun, hull MMG, coax MMG. So that just um, that was there in case there were bigger tanks. Talking armor nine plus. So light anti tank guns will be good to put pins, but they're not really a strong anti tank gun for a for a medium or heavy tank. So the medium anti tank gun was there. There was one rifle platoon, which had four uh, five-man regular squads. So they are just, they're just the bodies. They're the, <laughs> the, the four infantry units to claim and contest objectives as required. Two inexperienced light mortars, one regular anti-tank rifle, an inexperienced platoon commander um, to make up, obviously, the, the legal part of the rifle platoon, and the company commander. And a uh, Kubel wagon, um, which was inexperienced. The company commander, I will talk about at the end, but the plus four leadership is invaluable. Mm. And 15 order dice, I am sure Bo would say that that is quite low. 
for oh, yeah. 1,100 points in this format, and it was. But again, we'll talk about that dice count um, as we move forward. So the games commenced. So the first game I came across was a German list, and it was from the team from Northern Ireland. They had uh, two rifle platoons and one armor platoon, and only 13 order dice. It should be noted, and again, Bo does cover this in other videos, the, the matchup format at WoW was the team captains looked at the tables, they read the missions on each table, and then they went and placed lists face down. So you you were never going to be able to engineer matchups. You just had to play the best list on the best table for it and the best mission. So all these matchups were in, oh, essentially random. Uh, so where did this guy spend his points? So what I've done here is I am highlighting what the anti-tank assets were, the, the key points. So there's 242 and the 250 slash 10 so that has got the light anti-tank gun it's the um, small open top half track there was one panzer shrek and there was an infantry squad that had two panzer fausts the mission type we played was a uh, breakthrough so we're trying to get off each other's board edges plus kill points was that on the uh, on the highway to hell board with the four lanes going across it no, no it was on a, a, a nicely balanced Okay. Nicely balanced um, sort of Western Europe port, mm. so there's no there's no issues. There were roads, um, some of them were open, some of them had craters to to limit movement. And I suppose the very first highlight was, <coughs> or the first takeaway was, I didn't lose any tanks. Mm. What happened was that uh, his early sort of lunges forward with the Panzer Shrek failed, and as soon as it exposed itself, it died. It mm. got out of a half track. It had one chance to to make a shot. It didn't make it, and then a weapons fire happened, and it died. The Stu forty two took about four or five turns to get to to be destroyed. Um, being armor nine, uh, I wasn't able to bring my medium anti tank gun to bear on it just because of placement and terrain. But multiple light anti tank guns putting pins on it controlled it until it could be. Um, effectively destroyed mm. the squad with two panzer faust was just out of position and um its transport died uh, the the enemy army here had i believe three half tracks um, yeah. so they were zipped up troops and what happened during the game was as i've sort of commented there was not enough anti-tank assets mm. on my opponent's side and once they were ever exposed they were they were handled quite quickly uh, the Panzer Shrek died to small arms fire. The Panzer Fausts were controlled by limiting their movement. And the 250 slash 10, um, as soon as it stuck its nose out, three anti tank guns, they shot it and killed it. What my opponent did get to do, though, was, and this was just some, um, some, I guess, rusty rules knowledge on my part, was in my head, I believed that half tracks didn't get double movement on roads. And that was my mistake. They Ooh, yeah. obviously clearly do. And so my opponent was able to get one of his half tracks with two units inside off board really quickly. Um, so he took a really big early lead. But what that meant for him was, though, that the dice advantage weighted way more in my favor. Yeah. And um, I was able to nibble away to gain those points back. And then once there was a gap, um, I had a tank. A Kugel wagon with an officer and a light mortar. That in the, the in the end, it was a victory, and the points were the difference was enormous um, during that mid to late game. So, uh, so yeah, I think that covers that covers the first game effectively. Have you got any commentary? Not at all. Question? It 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 seems a straightforward game, especially because you had higher order dice count than he had, and as soon as he pulled out three of his order dice, he was down to ten effective order dice on the table. Yeah. And you still had all your tanks, so you could basically run the tables on him, I think. Yes, and that is that is exactly what happened. So the second game, <coughs> excuse me, we were playing the South Coast Pirates team, which I believe the bulk of their players come out of the Pegasus Warlords Club in the south of England. Um, great, competent players. And my opponent had Japan. 
So it was a high order dice count list. I think it was at least 20. Two rifle platoons, one armor platoon, and one heavy platoon. I've plucked out the highlights from his list. Obviously, there was buckets of infantry. Hmm. Um, but there were five suicide bombers. There were three medium mortars. And there were two light tankettes. So the tankettes were um, armor seven. They had recce. They had a medium machine gun on the turret and a heavy machine gun in the hull. I can't remember what type number they were, but uh, again, it was another. So this is the the second army I've played, second tank platoon, but only sort of the minimum requirement. This particular mission, it was an attacker defender situation, but it was uh, once I was given the attacker's sort of position, it was a breakthrough mission again for me. The only difference is that the defender got to set up their entire army first. Um, Did you choose to be attacker or defender? No, I was given the attacker's brief um, by my opponent, which was completely right. Yeah. Um, It was it was the right thing to do. So he was able to position uh, the suicide bombers exactly in the path that he knew I would go. The only path I could go, um, and that is the path that. that I went down and in this particular <coughs> excuse me in this particular mission I lost two tanks one of them was to a mortar hit on a six and the other one was to one of the suicide bombers to mitigate the suicide bombers he he knew how to stall the game um because time time was his sort of ally here if he could burn mm. turns I wasn't getting things off the board but with multiple tanks, I was able to advance with two and have one on ambush so that he he would lose at least one. Something would happen. And that's and that's what happened. And during that time, I was um, using the tanks to vacuum up a lot of the small squads. And uh, my infantry, I, I think three out of the four infantry squads didn't fire a gun. They just stayed alive. <laughs> uh, one of them was able to sort of find a, a little area of hard cover and shoot at some spotters just to limit the uh, the mortar fire that was coming back. And being the second game, this was the first time that I had saw an opponent snap to action in version three, and all they used it for was to fire the multiple to fire the mortars quickly. Mm. So the first dice out, the mortars were 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 rolling quite um quite fast at me so it meant that my tanks were always moving but they were always going to be moving uh, so yeah so it was a, a case of vacuum up a lot of the smaller squads the tanks did the heavy lifting and um turns five and turn six was when the the tanks vacated vacated the port there was a story though can i, from ask, this can I ask you one thing yes. um for this, you really needed the darker tanks to still be a thing in version three, and and I had sort of pronounced them dead as soon as we saw the the nerf to uh, machine guns on tanks. But of course, you you were using the the darker panzers of the Germans with the Hitler's boss and all that. Did you find that you had enough shots to actually kill units when you were shooting at them? Hey, you, I never killed small teams. The old small teams, yes. Snipers, yeah. yes. If there were a, if there was a light mortar or medium mortar caught on the hop, yes. Yep. Yep. Uh, but as soon as you get to around five or more models, you're not you're not killing them outright. Um, okay. The combination of cover saves does help. You know, units of five or more stay alive, mm. but they are consistently pinning. Yeah. So if you if you take this opportunity to think about the five tanks, each tank can split fire mm. to two different targets. Therefore, if my math is pins. accurate, yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's the right vault. Uh, no five. You can have two units each receiving five pins. Yes, and that's that's a lot. That's a lot of pins. Yep. Yep. But. <laughs> Excuse me. Game three. I see you've clicked on to um, the third game, which was England. So again, I was facing a German army, and the player driving it was 
exceptionally competent at what he does. I'm not I'm not gonna name the names of the players, but very, very, very high end player from England. So it was a medium order dice count, so I believe it was around the eighteen mark, um, from memory. Yeah. He had two rifle platoons, one armor platoon. Now this this armor platoon is what I've described as a mixed bag armor platoon. And he had spent reasonable number of points, but it was almost like he had made up a toolbox from yeah. the armor platoon. Whereas yeah. my toolbox was all hammers. <laughs> if I've got a problem, hammer. Whereas this player had uh, the Panzer II Lush with the light auto cannon and recce, the Kugel Blitz, so fantastic piece of equipment, armor nine, a Panzer IV chassis with twin heavy auto cannons in the turret. The triple two armored car, open top armor seven light auto cannon recce and wield, and a Panzerwerfer. So that's the half track fully armored multi launcher. Then on top of that, you had Brandenburgers, and I believe, um, well, I not believe they were carrying a Panzerfaust. So that was where his anti tank was. It was a kill point style mission, and there was a central objective on a bridge, which counted as two points but it also was the secondary um, objective so it was quite a hotly contested uh, piece of the board and it was a reasonably open board there was a river running from the uh, one side to the other which we declared you couldn't shoot under the bridge so that <coughs> excuse me locked a nice bit of line of sight and it was that was useful for both of us during that game, though, I lost three tanks. Ouch. So, yeah. Uh, so one of them was from an uh, outflanker. It was the Brandenburgers. It was a single Panzerfaust to the side armor. So lucky shot. Dice rolling. Yeah. But, uh, I never want to say lucky because you know, yeah, well, of, the tracks away from my opponent. Um, mm. Right, got them in. Got them into the right place at the right time. Yeah. The Kugel Blitz got one. Um, it shot front armor the dice to, to make sure it got it and then at the dying seconds of the game the triple two managed to um get a side armor shot on one of the my panzer threes which had been immobilized in the river mm. um which was really good and in, in return though i should say that i did destroy the kugel blitz i did destroy the panzer Werfer. i immobilized the lush in uh a what you call it in a forest <laughs> which yeah. from ambush the the upgunned panzer three nailed it on ambush on an ambush shot uh, as oh, it was wrecking it was yeah. beautiful i loved it <laughs> um but what that meant was that i had tanks almost exchanging themselves with the enemy anti-tank assets yeah uh, so it was a regular sort of two and throw between the two of us and it ended up in a draw the game was a draw Hmm. Um, but as I've highlighted there, the Kugel Blitz was the first to go. Uh, I played really aggressively and I rolled one of the Daka Panzer threes straight at the Panzerwerfer. Um, and I actually managed to pin it out. The combination of the Panzerwerfer rolling to activate when it had three and four pins on it. So it was getting lucky to. Hmm. That's, I use the term getting lucky, but. Ah, you did it uh, yourself. <laughs> he did, I know. <laughs> But he, he rolled a, against the odds to make it yeah. activate. But what it meant was that it, by the time I got to it, um, it was sitting on seven pins. So all I needed to do was hit it to make it, to pin it out. And that's exactly what happened. And he had a, his, um, there was a platoon commander over there and he was another quick dice that I gobbled up as well. So, uh, so no, so that was the first, so that was the third armored platoon that I'd encountered, but it was the, first one that had four enemy armor pieces um in that sort of toolbox format so it was it was more of a challenge for my tank platoon uh, and the points that he had saved he had invested in better quality troops so he had some Falschmjäger uh, veterans in there so they were a little bit tougher um, to move so I, no, also, good... I also feel like he's his cool blitz is um comparable to your up armored panzer three um that in that it's it's there to kill other tanks mostly mm -hmm. 
Whereas the Panzer Lux and the Panzerwerfer, they can go and do different things. The 222 can go and, and hunt light vehicles or infantry if it wants to. Yep. But the Kugelblitz is very much there to, to kill enemy light armor, your tanks, Correct. basically. Yep. Yep. And it was, yeah, it was a, it was a good stretch for it to take out uh, armor eight on the mm. front front armor yep. shot. So, yep. you know, when when you do the statistics of it, the um, four shots on the move hitting on fives you've got plus three pen so you need a five to glance or a six to penetrate so that was um it was good good stuff yep so the next day we rolled on into game number four uh, and that was against the mixed nuts team which i think effectively was denmark two it was, was denmark two yeah. yeah 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 um but again i was drawn against germany and this German I army, see a theme here. <laughs> for for the effectively a random matchup when you're face down, um, this is the third it's... German list out of four games so far. For me, for me, that speaks to that it's not so random because everyone is sort of having the same process. They're thinking, what missions would my list be good on? And you're sort of picking the same missions. You're picking armored missions for these type or armored list for these type of missions. So I think that's why it's not so random anyway. And I guess it also means that the German lists are of that type. Yeah. <laughs> but so it was a medium order dice list. I'm sure it was around 17 or 18 dice and consisted of two rifle platoons, one armor platoon and one artillery platoon. The highlights, five 250 slash nines. So wow. that is the yeah, armor seven open-topped, half-track uh, armoured cars with the uh, light auto cannon and coax mini machine gun. Mm -hmm. Two multi-launchers um, from the artillery platoon, so Nebel Wevers, and uh, a unit of Brandenburgers. They were in a half-track with a couple of Panzerfausts. So this was uh, another kill point style mission, and it was attacker defender of an airfield. I am not going to cover the mission itself, but effectively uh, the defender would start with two victory points in hand and yeah. you needed to win by two victory points um, in a standard kill mission. So, And were you the attacker or the defender? I, I was the attacker and yeah. I was given that. So you were behind, behind from the start. So yeah. I was two points behind. So there, there's no point covering off in that mission. Um, I've provided my feedback directly to, to the TO. Uh, so the mission itself, I lost one tank, mm. and that was to a, a Nebel Werfer, who obviously scored the six on the top armor, yeah, and destroyed it. And I think that was in the first round of shooting. What I then found though was my opponent had a dedicated armor platoon, and granted there was a big differentiation in the armor and anti-tank assets but having recce mm. was a lifesaver um on a, on a great number of occasions for it he also had stronger troops so there was um a really strong uh Falschermeger troop i think there was like 10 guys that all had submachine guns or assault rifles <laughs> that, that made it hard work uh, to dig them out of um, out of cover. Having the two point advantage, this is where I mean I lost this game, mm. uh, but I had it to a draw, and then it was one of those fantastic bolt action moments where I was pushing for the win. So I had to activate a tank that was on two pins. It mm. failed. It was a foo bar. It turned its turret and it killed a five man infantry squad. Oh um, no! Yeah, uh, you know, five five regular infantry guys who were standing, you know, confidently beside their tank. Yeah, where's the they got shot. So they were, they were. I think the shots were hitting on threes or something. Uh, it was something ridiculous. So yeah, they all died. Oh. So that was a loss. But what I found in this game, and my opponent will listen to this, and he is also an exceptionally high end um, player. If I had got another turn, I would have won the game. Mm. And because by the end of the game, my tanks had broken through his lines and were starting to corral his um, small teams and recce units. 
uh, to the point where I know that there was one, I think, three out of the five 250 slash nines had pins. One of them was immobilized. So it was all starting to fray at the edges. Hmm. What was good, though, from that army was that the light auto cannons, they never threatened to destroy a tank at any stage no. because my tanks were mutually supporting each other. But they were always receiving pins hmm. all the time. My tanks always had pins on them. So there was always activations required. Did your opponent use that little trick where he fired HE instead of um, uh, anti-tank rounds? Absolutely. Yep. At it's... long range, at long range, he would fire HE because he knew he would never destroy the tank, but he was just hoping to do the two Double pins, pins, the maximum yeah. number of pins. And yeah. then as soon as I moved within the short range, that's when he switched to armor piercing rounds yeah. when he was actually trying to impact the tank. So. So I only lost one tank that game to a multi-launcher, um, but the pin control from the light auto cannons was effective. Yeah. And then we're on to game five. Game five, and I'm facing Germany again um, from the Spain uh, Spanish second team. <clears throat> so this was an early war German army. It was a high order dice count, uh, at least 20, if not 21. And it was two rifle platoons, one heavy platoon, one artillery platoon. And this I described as it was the ultimate mixed bag army. Yeah. Um, and it's the, the first time I've not encountered at this event uh, armor platoon. What he did have, though, was a heavy auto cannon through the artillery platoon. There were, I think there was a medium mortar and a heavy mortar. Mm. There was a medium anti-tank gun, artillery police. There was a multi-launcher, and there was an air observer. And this was a sector-style mission with full deployment and prep bombardment. Um, I need to... Ooh. Yep. I yep. need to thank my opponent. And I, again, I'm not using any names, but he, it was one of my favorite games of bolt action. <laughs> it was such an enjoyable game. <laughs> He was such an enjoyable human to be at a table with, completely um, at ease with everything that was that was going on for rules queries. It just, yeah, fabulous. I, I, I said to him at the end, I would play him every weekend, um, mm. and it was it was extremely good, well fought, well fought game because we we both decided to deploy everything, yeah, which was crazy. <laughs> it all got, it all got prepped. <laughs> so during this game, though. I, I won the game, but during that process, I lost two tanks. One was to an air observer. Um, I can't remember this, the type of aircraft that came in, but I'll talk a little bit about more a little bit more about that in a second. The other one was to the medium anti-tank gun that was dug in to dense uh, heavy terrain. I, it was like a freaking laser cannon when this thing hit. <laughs> It was its first shot, <laughs> the first shot of the game, firing from hardcover, hitting on a three, plus five, and it was like, it, it just melted a Panzer three straight away, and my heart just went, oh, I need to get that fast. And it's and it's when you know, you know how good it can be, but watching the dice fly out and then having to reach over to get your little tuft of um, explosive yeah. cotton wool, and you're like, Oh no! I need to get that. I need to get that fast. I'm I'm gonna get that every single turn if I don't kill that one. Yeah, if I don't put yeah. something on that, and yeah. uh, he was, you know, canny enough to make sure there was a platoon commander nearby. So any sort of <laughs> pins were, yep, getting mm. mitigated. So I I need I, I did kill that quick. I got a lot of weapons fire. Um, it was a difficult game though because my opponent had a lot of dice. And it was a sort of multiple small units situation. Mm. And it was dense terrain. It was a very hey, big city fight uh, style game. So I needed to get the tanks into his board, his, his quarter quickly mm. uh, and close down the range. So it, again, it was that process of eliminate the threats. So the heavy auto cannon, I mean, I, I think I killed half the crew, but it was still alive at the end of the game. Um, the mortars had to go. The multi-launcher got a lot of shots, and mm. I was lucky that it only hit infantry squads. 
but eventually it went to long range um, machine gun fire from the from the tanks. Uh, the anti tank gun, I think it absorbed something ridiculous like thirty small arms shots from the the <laughs> other three the other three Panzer threes that his crews were terrified. <laughs> but it had to go. But the quick takeaway from this was that um, the air observer, the air observer, it stopped my assault for one whole turn. Yeah. Now, you commented recently in one of your videos that you said that pins don't matter. Mm. Pins do. Because, for at least for me, for this mm. army, I've got a platoon commander who's plus four. And he keeps everything moving forward. The problem is, though, that there comes a point with the tank assault where the tanks outstretch his ability, um, his leadership bubble. Now, it's 12 inches. That's a big bubble. The problem is, though, is his protection. Because if he can be seen, he can be shot, and he will die so quickly. Yeah. So there comes a point where the, your ability to protect him uh, runs out. Yeah, stops, and that's where he stops. So the tanks have got to make it themselves. So for one whole turn, I had to rally three tanks because yeah. um, he destroyed one, but there were pins on the other the other tanks. And I think, yeah, there was at least three or four pins by this point. Other things mm. were putting pins out on them. So that air observer stopped the assault for one whole turn. And just and that, for context that... for, for the viewers here, at World of War, the German air observers, if they were early war observers, could shoot twice right correct yeah yeah so thankfully only one of his shots came in it was the first one uh, mm. he called in the second one but it, it the plane circled you know it yeah. was always a two or a three so it never ever arrived and he would have if that had arrived on time on target like he wanted it would have stopped my tank assault again and and he would have got a victory i have no doubt of that um, that close then it's a yeah. good game <laughs> it was it was an Excellent game. I would I would play him a hundred times. Uh, such a yeah, good human. But once the tank platoon broke the lines, it was just a matter of vacuum vacuuming yeah. up the units um, as they were exposed. Yeah. So yeah. And then on to the final game, game six against British Lions. Yep. So uh, against the British Lions again, facing a German army. Yeah. I know five five <laughs> out of six games against Germany. Um, so this was an eighteen order, <laughs> an eighteen order dice army, two rifle platoons, one armor platoon, and one artillery platoon, and mm. this this entire army was a mixed bag. So there were two heavy auto cannons in the artillery platoon, there were two Kugel blitzes from the tank platoon, uh, and there was a multi launcher, obviously from the artillery platoon. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, and then from the Infantry, there was a unit of Brandenburgers that had Panzerfausts. Uh, I'm sure as well there was a unit or two of green Falschenjäger, mm. uh, which were quite effective as well. With this particular mission, though, this was a attacker defender um, based upon the surrounded mission from the rulebook, and so we we played Fog of War. Now, there's there's some contention out there about Fog of War. Where it's written in the generic section, if an enemy unit comes on a board edge, you can just follow them on. In the specific missions, though, it's written in the same style as it was in version 2, and that if a friendly unit comes on, an enemy unit cannot follow on that board, cannot be the next unit on from that board edge. So in that, the same turn, right? In the, in the same turn. So that's yeah. the fog of war that we played, because yeah. it was referenced to that specific mission. So we were never able to follow on each other straight away. So, but it's still it's still amazing chaos with fog of war, isn't it? Absolute chaos, which is why I was put on that table with mm. five Panzers. Yeah, um, those are the ultimate tools to roll on to destroy units. So I lost the dice off, and I was the defender, so I had to deploy a poor five man infantry squads into the middle of the board, which. <laughs> Otherwise, it wasn't terrible, <laughs> but it was. It, there were no ruins. It was full of buildings, and yeah. so knowing exactly what I'm facing against, like I'm not getting in a building. 
that would be crazy. I'm, I'm not yep. going to do that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but tactically, it meant, though, that my opponent was the attacker and he got first wave. Yeah. And first wave fog of war, he was able to start approaching me from all board edges. Yeah. Um, so he rolled a, a multi launcher on. He made this little fortress around an objective. Uh, sorry, I should note there were five objectives on the board mm. one in each quadrant and then one in the center. So there was a lot, there was a lot going on. Um, but he built a fortress with the heavy auto cannons and infantry around one of them. I uh, rolled the multi launcher on, then started building little castles all around. And then from turn two, reserves started coming on, and then I just brought panzers on. What I didn't get the chance to do at the start of the game was to have panzers mutually support each other. Mm. I was bringing them on to exchange themselves for uh, for for target units. So the the naval warfare went straight away. That was the first thing the Panzer, the first Panzer that came on, came on the board edge and killed it. There were so many buildings it would have just destroyed the center of the board. Uh, the next Panzer that came on killed a uh, um, light howitzer, and then I think at that point that's when the the heavy auto cannons started to go on ambush, which is exactly what you wanted yeah. to do. Yeah. And so then that that process started. Uh, the game started. I lost three tanks. Um, bit, it was the end of the day. I'm a little bit vague. I'm I'm sure I lost three tanks because I, I can I remember looking down at the board, and I know where definitely two destroyed tanks were. I know where mm. definitely two active tanks were, and I'm just going to assume the third one must have been dead somewhere. Okay. Uh, so I lost uh, one tank to a Kugel Blitz, and I lost the other two to Panzerfaust attacks. My opponent had um, two heavy field cars, each with, I think, like a five or six man veteran infantry unit inside with Panzerfausts. So they came on and exchanged their lives for for killing tanks. Um, <coughs> but the Panzer threes from reserves, they just ate whatever they rolled up against. Um, yeah, that seems pieces. really strong, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Having the ability to roll in exactly where you want it to go, so yeah. the enemy can't get the cover they yep. need and whatever. And, yeah. And I was fortunate that the I only ever failed one leadership check. Obviously, mm -hmm. the Brandenburgers are the big impact there, making it a minus two. Uh, with the particular list, though, here it was a huge mixed mixed army platoon. Um, mm. And I just never felt it was it was ever strong enough with dedicated anti tank assets to handle them all. It's funny because was... he's got two Kugel Blitzes, which normally I would say can handily uh, take your Panzer threes, but but what um... I've written there was I watched the two Kugel Blitzes. They came mm -hmm. on as a team, um, and they spent two turns each trying to kill one Panzer three. <laughs> oh, that's and at one. And at one point, the Panzer III, it was um, immobilized. It mm -hmm. then got uh, uh, something to do with its steering. Okay. There was some other result. Um, oh, yeah, engine damage, so it could only go slowly. Um, it then got immobilized, and it had four pins on it. Mm -hmm. I still managed to activate it to spin <laughs> the turret and put a pin on one of the cool blitzes. <laughs> and because it was right at the board edge, my opponent knew that a failed order check and it would be gone. Yeah. So it was. It took them a long time <clears throat> to kill that, and that's just down to dice luck or unluck. Um, mm. I'm not sure, but that was the only tank the Kugel Blitz has killed. The other two kills were Panzerfaust at close range. Um. And once those once the Kugel Blitzes had killed that one tank, they were then free to roam around, and they never ever got another tank, and they were not short of targets. Mm. So, um, so it was a victory for myself against that list, um, and it was good fun. That that great little screenshot that is from the very first game. Yep, you can see the Stu Forty Two on fire, oh, uh, yeah. and you can just you can just see the Panzers have just rolled, rolled rolling forward. through the the enemy. Yeah, like that, yeah. 
that pans are at the the bottom of the image that's that is in his deployment zone yeah and i'm sure this is like turn four or turn five so yeah those panzers were terrifying yep um so so what were the main takeaways for you <clears throat> so this is my opinion again so having played with this tank platoon and also with an american tank platoon during practice games mm. the v3 changes taking away the additional movement on roads is not a factor given the tanks two turns though is enormous and the story i want to tell is from the second game <clears throat> excuse me it's the breakthrough mission i'm pushing through and i'm trying to push through suicide bombers and at one point, my opponent had an outflanker. It was a infantry squad that came on. And they, they were depleted, and they were down to one man. As I was advancing forward, obviously, the front of the tank is facing my opponent's board edge. I advanced at nine inches forward. Then I did the two turns to make a 180-degree turn, which then meant the front of the tank was facing my board edge, effectively, so that it could shoot at the one rifleman. And then I <laughs> spun the turret so that the turret was then facing the rear of the tank but his board edge so that the two coax machine guns could shoot at the big threat which was the suicide bomber killed both units and i remember my opponent watching it happen knowing mm. that it was completely legal but still thinking wow yeah so been able to turn that tank 180 degrees so that the you know, I could maximize the machine gun shots where I needed them was mm. I, I, and and using both the two turns throughout the, the whole event and just increase its maneuverability. And then the next turn turned it twice again and rolled it off board. Did you also find that, uh, at least for me, I found the two turns to be really useful in placing my front armor where I knew that the enemy was going to shoot at me from? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> it made the it just made it more effective like yeah. fire arcs were maximized so i had 15 order dice the big order dice lists were not scary no simply because as soon as you start to shoot they, they start to bleed their dice so quickly mm. um this happened in practice games and this happened at the event as well the mixed bag armies just do not have enough proper and by proper i mean sort of plus three or better um anti-tank weapons because what's happening during the game is that the tanks are focusing on their threat on the on the things that are going to threaten them mm. and as those weapon fires are exchanged your opponent's losing their anti-tank ability also you're you're going to lose a couple of tanks but at the end of the exchange, around the end of turn three, beginning of turn four, the exchange should be done. And when I look down, I will have two or three tanks left and you have no anti-tank assets left. Therefore, yep. I just then spend the tail end of the game vacuuming, vacuuming up even more dice. And that is how it played out. Mm. Um, and that's where, that's where my belief that I'm going to run with for the next little while is that dedicated, dedicated version three armies will always be superior to the mixed bag. Granted, I've only done it with tanks, but you look at the games where I got a draw and a loss. We know that the loss was down to a bad foobar and a mission. Yeah, I was facing off against a dedicated um, tank platoon. Granted, it only had the two fifty slash nines, but it was. There were five it was a them. lot of those. It was five of them. The draw, it was four tanks out of the five. And it was a toolbox of tanks, but there were still, you know, armored, there was enough armored assets there. So at the moment, that's what I believe. I've already covered the losing tanks is okay as long as you're reducing your enemy's um, anti tank ability. This picture was specifically chosen for this next comment, central board control. Once the tanks are in the middle of the board, it means that those machine guns have range to every corner of the board and nothing can hide, can't yeah. hide from them all. 
and it's when they start to do their overlapping um, ambushing. So if you've got one on ambush that acts as a bit of a mother hen to watch out for any threats. And it also means that recce vehicles, you just don't have a chance to escape. One will fire, you recce. As soon as you recce, the ambusher fires at it with a plus one to hit. Um, yeah. Fire its anti-tank gun. So central board control. And then, <coughs> excuse me again, the company commander. I do not believe uh, a focused army like this or any other focused army can work without a company commander. There are those points where you just need to make it explode forward. Yeah. And when you draw that dice, it does, even though I, you know, it's a German company commander and you get an extra dice, just a normal company commander with four extra order dice coming out. Mm. Yep. In, in this first game. And that's because you felt like that there were turns where you really wanted your whole panzer force to move at the same time. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I had no, uh, no hesitation about doing it, you know, even though it would leave you short in the bag. Mm. If, if you're leaping them all forward and you're killing order dice at the same time, then that bag balance will, um, will melt away. Or if you're forcing him to go down with four or five yep. units. Yep, all at the same time. So, But what yep. it means is that you are fully in control for that moment. Yeah. Um, which is, yeah, which is absolutely fantastic. It's a fantastic ability. Uh, and Did as, you use, as at any point, use your uh, command vehicle special rules? Yep. 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 Um, it was those moments where uh, the when the Panzer Force sometimes outstretched themselves from the company commander, mm. uh, the command tank kept, not as effectively, it's only plus one, but um, yeah, still still pushed it all forward. I think I had any, didn't have another note. No. Uh, weaknesses, though. Yeah. So, specifically at World Open War, vehicles could not contest objectives. Now that's not the normal rule in normal gameplay. That's that's correct, is it not? I think you can contest objectives yep. in normal in normal, rules, in yeah. normal gameplay. So at WoW, so they're even better in version three than they were at, at World of yeah, War. We're going to say I'm going to call it real life, mm. not WoW life. So <laughs> in World Open War. They were weaker. They couldn't contest objectives. I actually felt that was quite a relief because mm. it just meant that my tanks were focused on just killing. I didn't need to go. I didn't need to feel the need to park on an objective. Um, other than twice, actually, I did it twice. But once, both times were to act as a, a shield for the infantry behind it, which is exactly yep. what a tank would do. Um, you know, I formed an armored wedge mm. <laughs> around one secondary objective. And my command tank par parked on a bridge to claim another, or to be there to protect the infantry. So, a uh, pin control from auto cannons. So the the light auto cannon, it, look, it got a side armor shot in one game. Other than that, it, they are dishing out pins to to control yeah. your tanks. To balance that out, that's where your company commander comes in. Keep them safe. Mm. I, I sort and, of felt uh, or had the same experience. I was fielding three T-60s with light auto cannons, and I think they killed one armored vehicle all weekend, something like that. No, that's not right. Uh, one one tank choice, which was a, a Hungarian Nimrod, but that was a 7 plus, and then a couple of a white scout cars, um, but that, that was it. That was all they yeah. killed. The other comment I've got down there, <coughs> excuse me, it's not an exciting or a diverse way to play. My games, look, I found excitement when it, in it because I've been, I've been enjoying version 3 greatly. Yeah. And I enjoy playing with tanks. I've done it quite a bit in the past. So I, I enjoyed playing this list. But I knew that every game was the same. Mm. I had the same tactics to deploy. There were a couple of different variations, but there was no diversity um, in what I needed to do. 
I put that down as a negative because I think other people will see it as a negative. I personally Some will, yeah. I personally didn't care because I enjoyed playing uh, the game. I enjoyed watching the tanks rolling forward. There were things I didn't get to do. I didn't get to do a tank assault uh, against another vehicle, so I didn't get to charge another vehicle. I didn't get to charge any artillery pieces. Um, I, I want to do those things still, um, but I, I believe I've learned enough about the tank platoon. I'm not sure what I've written on my next slide, if I've got a next slide. What I will say, though, is that... There are some conclusions, I, at least, yeah. Oh, there are conclusions. Great. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's a little screenshot of part of my own winter German tank collection. Um, and it looks bloody amazing, and you know it. I love it's them. so cool. I love it. So you've got the Tiger, the Kugelblitz. Yeah. I've got yeah. the um, the Panther Colian in the yeah. top right there. Yeah. Uh, Panzer three, Panzer four, two fifty slash nine. There's a bog war in there somewhere. The war from for it. Anyway, love them all. I've yeah. loved them all. I believe now the path I'm on. Maybe not true for all version three players, but it's now the path of rock paper scissors. Mm. I'm making the big sweeping statement that the mixed bag armies are going to suffer in general due to the specialized natures of the other armies that they are likely to face. So, you know, you look at the the, um, the army from game six, the German army, you look at yeah. the army from game five, the other German army that had the medium anti tank gun and the air observer. Those were mixed. Those were mixed bag. The Japanese army as well was a mixed bag army and it suffered greatly. Mm. Um, and even in that mission, it had the advantage in the mission, but it still suffered from, mm. from facing these five tanks. And again, from playtesting, the tank platoons wiped the floor with the mixed bag. We'll call them balanced armies for lack of a better term. Yeah. Um, so what I want to find and what I, I am on this quest now is what beats a tank? What can beat mm. this tank list? Because after coming back from World Open War, I've got other events coming up in Scotland. And I just looked at it and I thought, I can't write any other list. That I want to use because it just the tank list is the best. Yep. And my this the Scottish captain reminded me, it's like, but we're going to a tournament in Scotland. You don't you you've you've proven that the tanks work. You don't need to prove it at home. And you're like, you're absolutely right. Well, you want to win, don't you? <laughs> well, there's wanting to win, but at yeah. the moment we're I I am more interested in doing my um yeah. the learning path hmm. of version three of the path I want to learn. So I am working on what can beat five tanks. Yeah. That's the next list I'm going to be deploying. What can beat five tanks? And if you are willing to have me on again. I definitely will. If you've got I, a, a, a conclusion to how to beat this. You're... I will present you what I've tried yeah. to beat five tanks. But I know we're, we're shutting down and we're almost winding up. I'm going to throw a little glimmer of... Um, positivity to the sort of maybe the naysayers that are watching this video the daca stewart tank is dead though yeah that particular tank is is done yeah simply because of weak sides yeah um i look at all the times that those panzer threes were getting attacked on the side and knowing that uh an additional plus one on the side and oh on the rear uh, the Stuarts wouldn't be able to hold. And there's and... so many, so many also cannon tanks now in the game yep. that that absolutely kill uh, weak side stewards. So yep. yeah, I agree. The the darker steward is done. The darker steward is done, and also it's got three less shots. Yeah, that might that might not you know seem like a big number, but it, um, it is. As, as when you're percentage... used to having oh. 18 dice in your hand as a British yeah. player. That's a but lot it's not, it, that I should have lost. But it's now that comparison to the Panzer III, which has got 12 shots. Yeah. Um, and it's only 10 points more. Doesn't have weak sides. Got more shots. The yeah. Panzer III is very much alive and kicking. Um, mm. But I really want to kick it in the head. So watch this space. <laughs> right. I hope we all learned something here. 
Alistair, thank you so much for coming on and uh, educating right. us all about running pantsers. And please do, when you've figured out how to beat them, please come again and tell us how, how to kick the ass of that. It'll be the rock, paper, scissors, because after it the will. end of that next video, it I will, will need to then beat that list. Yeah, it will. Right. Stay safe, everybody. And see you in the next video. Cheers.